Is time travel possible and how? How would you feel if you found out that there is a slightly possible chance for you to go back in time to your high school days with your current physical stature? You'd most likely go hunting for that bully who made your high school a living hell for you, right? I can see the grin on your face already. Wait a minute, would you like to win a brand new phone? It's competition time. Grab a chance at winning a new phone from Information Forge. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, like our videos, comment on our videos, and share our videos on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, or other social media platforms. Increase your chances of winning by watching as many videos on our channel as you can. Winners will be announced at the end of the month. Good luck and enjoy watching the videos! Hey guys, welcome to Information Forge, where we bring you the juiciest content. The concept of time travel is one of the most controversial subjects in science and physics. Although great minds like Albert Einstein and Isaac Newton have made certain findings that should make this process simple, we are still waiting for a breakthrough. According to Wikipedia, time travel is the concept of movement between certain points in time, analogous to movement between different points in space by an object or a person, typically with the use of a hypothetical device known as a time machine. Due to the wishful desire for humans to take a quick stroll back to the past, to correct a mistake or fix an error, many have taken time travel as a philosophical and fictional subject. We only get to see it work with Jimmy Neutron and his friends. But we cannot help but wonder if there is a silver lining anywhere in the remote future where humans will eventually be able to seamlessly whoosh back and forth through time. A Ride Into The Future At one point or another, we all have wondered what Earth would be like in the next 100 years. Will there be human cyborgs? Flying cars? The ones that never came in our time? Or will everywhere be a wasteland destroyed by a visiting asteroid? But why don't we start small? Check this out. Let's say you and I synchronize our watches right before I blast off into space. In the space shuttle, I'll be traveling about 28,000 kilometers per hour. Assuming that I take a few spins across the orbit of the Earth and come right back to Earth, we would see that more time would have passed for you on Earth than for me. Although it might be a very tiny amount of difference, it is significant nonetheless. This theory is known as time dilation. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, Time measured along different trajectories is affected by differences in either gravity or velocity, each of which affects time in different ways. Another good example of time dilation is when we compare the time on satellites to Earth. Take the International Space Station, for instance. After six months in space, astronauts were found to have aged 0.005 seconds lesser than regular humans on Earth. Quite minute, yes, I get it. But if the astronauts were able to travel closer to the speed of light, it would be an entirely different scenario. The effects of time dilation don't really kick in until about 75% the speed of light. Now stick with me, here comes the crazy space stuff. One of the strangest aspects of spatial relativity is the ability for distance to shrink in the direction of motion. Stay with me. If you're traveling to a point that's about 10 light years away at about 90% the speed of light, it might take about 11 years from the observer's view, but to the guys in the vessel, it might take just about 4.4 years. Why? Because at that speed, not only time, but distance dilates. Now I know what you're thinking. Is this time travel? Well, maybe not as you know it, but it is time travel. If you return from that 10 light years journey, you should be just about 9 years older. But guess what? Your friends on Earth would have aged up to 22 years, so it would mean that you have just traveled like 13 years into the future. The movie Interstellar has one of the most accurate depictions of how time travel works in real life. In the movie, Cooper and his fellow space teammates landed on a watery planet where gravity is 130% more than Earth. The planet is located just around a huge black hole called Gargantua, which orbits at about 55% the speed of light. To top this, Gargantua's mass is up to 100 million suns, and it rotates at 99.8% the speed of light. With all of these factors working hand in hand, the effect on time dilation can be pretty massive. Time is 61,000 times slower in that situation than on Earth. So one hour there is about seven years on Earth. When the team got back to their space vessel, all of their team members were already 23 years older which is crazy because they only spent about three hours down there. 
And guess what? It wasn't just sci-fi calculations. Those calculations are quite accurate impressively. Going back in time, any luck? Imagine you have a time travel booth that can transport you back and forth in time. One day you decide to mess with your grandmother, so you go back to the 30s to pull a prank on her. You pulled the plug and voila, you're standing beside young grandma who is having a good time beside the lake. In your quest to be silly, you push her into the lake. She drowns and dies. Now back up a little. If you killed your grandmother, that means that your mother would never be born and that would mean that you would not be born. But here's the plot twist. If you didn't exist to kill your grandfather, then you wouldn't have killed him and that would mean that he is still alive, hence you're still alive. It's an endless loop of time travel and causation called the grandfather paradox. While future travel has a more practical tone to it, traveling back in time is less possible than Hollywood would like us to think. Some theories state that specific types of motion in space might allow time travel into the past and future if these geometries and motions were possible, but that is a very big if, and this would require something called a closed timeline curve, or CTC for short, a loop in space that can theoretically allow an object to return to its own past, theoretically. Many scientists believe that this possibility of traveling to the past is down to zero, for many reasons, one of which is the issue of causality as seen in the grandfather paradox. If changing the past can disrupt the future, which is now the present, then it's a no-brainer. Time travel to the past is impossible. Although the Novikov self-consistency principle tries to pose a glimmer of hope by exalting the universe's ability to restore itself to a consistent plot, but this principle has been rejected by many scientists for a lot of loopholes and cracks. Another possibility for going back in time would be wormholes a transversible wormhole at that. There are two ways this can be done. The first way is to take one end of the wormhole on a journey on the speed of light, then return it to its original position. By then, it would be younger than the static wormhole. Classic time dilation stuff. The other option is to place one end of the wormhole beside a place with a strong gravitational pull, such as the Gargantua or the center of the Milky Way galaxy. This would result in a delay in time elapsed hence causing it to become younger. But there is one small problem. Wormholes are more of a pass through time and not your ticket to your teenage years. Also, they are quite rare to spot. While our longing to ride a dinosaur might not be fulfilled, there is hope with going forward into the future. Let us know what you think about time travel in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more juicy content. Also, turn on the post notification by hitting the bell to get notified when a new video is out. Bye for now and see you in our next video.